Okay, on this problem, first example here for section 2-2, uh, two, two, it says the following information is on the weight of a person that went on a diet, and here's the number of weeks they were on the, on the diet, and here's their weight. Now, you're going to get problems like this on tests occasionally where you need to highlight the data, copy it, go over to the Excel sheet, right mouse click, and paste special as text in, and you'll get your data in the Excel sheet. Now, at that point, click on the uh, Get Equation from the Data Points button, and what it does is it finds the cubic equation of best fit. So here's that the coefficients for that co uh, cubic equation. You can see it over here a little bit, the uh, cubic equation, and you can see that it fits the data points uh, pretty good. Not great, but, but pretty good. Uh, so anyway, at this point, we can find out just about anything we want to uh, about this data that's been made into this cubic model. For example, if we just wanted to plug in an x value, like what is the person's projected weight using this cubic equation in four weeks, here it is, 191. What's their weight after 20 weeks using this model? 42.9 pounds. So hopefully they didn't stay on this diet that long, and actually this, this model does not extrapolate well, because a cubic and quarty can, and equations like that go very steep, very fast. So they're only good within a restricted area, within a restricted domain. So uh, uh, that's how you can put in the x values. Now, if we wanted to say, well, I wonder when this person is going to weigh 195.5 pounds. So I'll just type that in and click Find Solutions, and it will get me the answers here that there's only one time that this person is going to weigh 195.5 pounds, and that's in 1.22 weeks. Now, it could have up to three solutions. Let's try 190 pounds and see what we get on that. And if we do that, uh, geez, we only get one solution there, too. So let me just try one more. Let's try 191.5 pounds. If I do that and click the Find Solutions, there we go. I get a couple uh, answers to that. There could have been up to three, and those are the three answers. Now, the reason why uh, there was a, a specific area that gives you three solutions because most of these are going to have one until you get down below this this maximum. So when I get down below this maximum in this area right here, there are up to three answers right there, and then, then you're back down to one answer on it. So anyway, this particular uh, problem has three times that this person weighs 191.5 and 3.33 weeks, 6.92, and 7.38 uh, weeks. Now, the big thing is max min. So let's say that this problem says, what is the uh, maximum this person will weigh within a from week 4 to week 20. Well, that's giving you a restricted domain. And that restricted domain may be listed in, in brackets, like you see right here, written in brackets. Well, this means that the domain goes from 4 to 10. Or it may be written with an inequality, like x is less than or equal to 10 and greater than or equal to 4. So that means that we need to plug those values in for the lower and upper value of the domain. And if we do that, plug those in there, then we're always looking down here in this absolute max, absolute min area. And it tells me that the maximum this person weighed within week 4 to week 20 was 191.51 pounds, and that was at week 7.16. The minimum they weighed, if you believe this domain, which is would be horrible, would be a week 20 where they weighed clear down to 42 pounds. Now, uh, I don't know if either of these, definitely not this. This is not the local minimum. That's not this spot because we were going way far out here. But if we change, uh, change this, and let's say we were looking from uh, a different time spot, say, for example, 0 to 10 weeks. So let me put that in here. And we can see that the uh, maximum they weighed was at the start, and the least they weighed was in 10 weeks, 188 pounds. Now, if you want to confirm that on your graph, then you need to start the graph at the, at the lower end of the domain and end the graph at the upper part of the domain. And if I do that, then hopefully I can confirm it on the graph that the lowest is right here at 10 weeks, and the highest was up here at 0 weeks. And if you ever can't see the graph well because of the data points, then just click the clear data points to, to change the uh, – so that you can see the graph better. And you can always get them back by clicking, clicking the Get Equation from Data Points button. Now, if we had the same data points, I'll copy them and go to the Quartic sheet. And let's say we wanted to find the Quartic Equation of Best Fit. So I'll paste special as values. This is pasting something from Excel to Excel. And let me zoom up on this. 
So I'm zoomed up on it and I pasted the data points into the Cordic sheet and I clicked the get equation from data points button and now I got my Cordic equation. And what I wanted to show you is this works the same way you can type in X values to get Y values over here and you can type in a Y value and click the find solution button like again when was the person weighing let's say 191.5 and click the find solution button and uh, give it time there we go and we have a couple solutions to that 14 weeks before they went on a diet and 3.37 weeks after they went on a diet and if we want to find our absolute max for men within a given uh, domain, you have to click this button here to get the local max amends. So now I've got the local max amends. And if we would change these values up here, we'd have to re-click these. But right here, if we want to look at this from week 0 to week 10, we can just type that in and we can find out that the minimum, maximum occurred at the start of the diet and the minimum occurred at the end of the diet. If we go, let's say, from week 0 to week 8, then let's see then the minimum was not week 8, the minimum was week 4, 0.894, and it was 190 pounds. Now let's take a look at this from 0 to 8. If we take a look at this graph from 0 to 8, we can see that, yeah, here's the lowest from 0 out to 8. Here's the lowest right there of 191 or whatever it was, 191.46. Now if we take that domain and stretch it out farther, then these out here when this graph curves around and comes back down that's going to be lower than what the graph was in this area like back a second ago if I would go let's say 0 to 11 weeks then I think the minimum is at the 11th week if I change this to 11 you can see that on the graph too that there is uh, it goes lower than that now this graph just this little area of it looks like it only has one min and one max local min local max actually there's two there's a w another one clear back, another max clear back at negative 9. So if you wanted to see all those things, we could graph this, let's say, from negative 11 to 11. So we see everything going on in this. So there, I think there's two maxes and a min. Uh, a quartic equation could have two maxes and a min or two mins and a max. And we can see it rolling along here. Here's a max. There's a min here and a max there. You can't see it real well because this is so high compared to these values in there. And again, you can click the clear the data points button and it will get rid of the data points so that you can uh, just see the graph by itself. But still, it's kind of hard to see this little min and little max right there because this is so huge. So it's hard to see everything, but just change your uh, upper and lower values and change the starting end of the graph so you can see everything you need to see.